Um, how long have I been a wrestling fan? Well, that's that's a good question. Um, I'm, I, I guess you could say that I've been a wrestling fan since I was about maybe six years old, five, five six years old. I mean, I really wasn't much of a wrestling fan. Um, the thing was, all I knew about was Hulk Hogan and, you know, Wendy Richter and Captain Lou and all that and Andre. So I was kind of a wrestling fan, but I only got to know them through the rock and roll, rock and wrestling cartoon. And then later on, I got more into it, and that's mostly thanks to my sister. Uh, she got me into it. So I was able to uh, enjoy it in, in ways that um, I never thought I could, and I and I think that was around 88, 89, and I've been a fan since then, you know. So basically, you're looking at almost, with me, almost about 84, about, well, man, 28 years almost, nearly 30. So close to 30 years, but about 20, 28 years um, altogether, if you want to count the rock and wrestling uh, <laughs> uh, situation up till now so I've been I've been a wrestling fan for quite some time and I, I've seen my I've and as a fan I've kind of seen the business change you know you know it's like you know I, I, I've seen the change you know and I, I've seen how you know it's evolved as a fan and you know I, I've got for example I've got a lot of um, you know I've got some raw I've recorded episodes of Raw and SmackDown from like 2003-2004 with my on DVD, and I even have the Armageddon of, of the pay-per-view I ordered there, the Armageddon pay-per-view from 2000. And when I look back at that, and and I look at the episodes I recorded in the 2003-2004 hour, it's like man, look how it, to me it's like wow, so much has changed in eight to twelve years and. And even beyond that, you know, I you know I still kind of sit back and I think to myself, man, you know, I go on YouTube and and, and, and I watch these WCW matches. And I'm thinking, man, no more, there's no more WCW, but there's TNA in its place, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, like I said, I've been a fan. I've, I've seen a lot of changes. I've seen a lot of things change, and it just sticks in my mind. I know you know how much has changed, and as being as a fan, that I was also able to get into the introduction of independent wrestling. Uh, when I was living in Lawrence, Kansas, I went and I attended um, every now and then the uh, Central State Wrestling events at the Lawrence Armory or at the Community Building, um, and I and I met my share of superstars there. I mean, yes, they were TNA guys, but. You know, I met my share of them. I've met Cole Cabana before he went to WWE and became uh, Scotty Goldman and then came back. Um, I, I've met Abyss. I've met Christopher Daniels. I've met AJ Styles, Sanjay Dutt. You know, the list goes on and on. I even met Evan Bourne when he was Matt Seidel. And he was taking on Jason Strife. So, you know, being a fan, so it kind of shows you how long I've been a fan there. And it's just, it was just an amazing, to me it's just an amazing feel. Um, you know, it's an amazing feeling. It just really blows my mind of how long, long I've been a fan and how much I've seen change. So, but to answer the question, how long? Like I said, almost about 30 years. 28 years basically. So, yeah, that's how long I've been a fan. Uh, what websites upset me the most? Well, there's a lot of websites out there that would upset anybody. Uh, but there's one website in particular, and I'm not going to name it. I'll just initial it. It's called ED. ED. And this site, um, I, I guess according to some users, 
is notorious for being nothing more than a place for trolls and people that really don't have anything anything better to do than to go on there and troll and make fun of people and stuff so that, that's the kind of website that upsets me because you know you think they would understand that you know this is this is wrong what they're doing you know they, they shouldn't go out and make fun of people just because maybe they don't have the skills to do what you know other people like myself do I mean that basically what they do is they take things that you know you could be a fan of you know and I, I mean I've come out and I've admitted you know I, I've come out and in fact you look at my YouTube channel and you definitely see that I'm a fan of what's known as the melting gag or the meltdown gag and especially when a female character, a cartoon character, melts down or does the melting gag and becomes a puddle or something like that and reforms herself or has to be reformed. You know, you know, they take something like that and they say, oh, look, you know, this you know, person's this, this guy's a sicko and all that. They take something like that from someone like me and, you know, it, to me it's just wrong. And, you know, I mean, I understand they have a right to do it. You know, it's a, it's a right, it's a freedom of speech and all that. I get that. I understand that. But, you know, it's like, what more, what, I mean, it's like, what do they want out of this? You know, it's like, what, what do people like this want? It's like, do they want, want something in return to shut up, uh, to leave us alone? What do they want? You know, and to me, this is what kind of upsets me. Now, I'm not saying it's the only up, only website out there that upsets me or upsets anybody else. Um, there's a uh, there's other websites out there that upset me. Like, like I could be. I'll, I'll give you an well. Honestly, some of the wet wrestling sites out there uh, upset me, and I'm not talking like professional wrestling sites like TNA and ROH and WWE. No. What upsets me is the insider sites that sometimes when you go on them you think okay I'm going to go on there and I'm going to read what they have to say and all of a sudden it gets interrupted by an ad and it says wait five seconds and you know to me that's what pisses me off of, that's what pisses me off about sites like that you know you don't need if you're going to let people read the material the free material then don't put no ads you know just because you want them to be premium cu customers hey that's fine but you know what you should treat the free customers, the free users, just as well as you, the same way you treat the premium users. That's the way I look at it. You know, other sites that upset me, of course, would be sites that when you first go on them and use their programs or use their site, you know, they provide most of the services for free. And all of a sudden you go back like I did today and find out that's not the case anymore. And that's, for example, one site being extra normal. And I used to use this a couple of times to do little animations of where well, I had the characters talking about topics normally I'd be talking about on camera or through a microphone or typing up. So, and I, and that's what, and the reason that site would upset me is because now you have to pay for that stuff. It's like, okay, I get there's certain things you have to pay for, but couldn't you go back to making things free? You know? Uh, but those are sites. But those are just a n number of sites that upsets me. So, um, yeah, you know, those are the kind that upset me. But I don't really let it get to me unless they really start to, unless they push certain buttons, and then it does get to me.